Hello, YouTube fam. Uh, my name is uh, Maria Juf, and I'm known in the social media world as the Real Africanist. Uh, this is my uh, YouTube launch, my Black History YouTube launch. Uh, I've been wanting to get on YouTube for a while. Uh, I already have a YouTube channel, but I have not been engaged with it, uh, except for commenting on other people's com content and uh, in other conversations. So uh, I decided to launch my own channel because I have a lot to say. And uh, I think I have a lot to say uh, that you would like to hear on uh, issues pertaining to uh, Africa and the African diaspora, uh, specifically in the area of African history, African culture, uh, and current affairs. So, uh, again, I am Marie Yajuf, and that's M-A-R-I-E, that's Ya, Y-A, and the last name is Juf. Um, I am a blogger. I blog at the African, I mean, I'm sorry, the real Africanist.com. I am a historian by trade. I'm an educator. I am a Pan Africanist, of course. And now I am a YouTuber. <laughs> uh, you got to excuse me. I'm a little nervous here, but I'm going to get through this. Okay. So uh, you can also find me on Twitter. Uh, tweeting under the real underscore Africanus, and you can find me on Facebook at uh, Maria Juf. Okay, so I got all of that out the way. Um, now, the reason why I'm on here is because, uh, for one thing, it's Black History Month, and I wanted to launch my YouTube uh, to celebrate Black History Month. Uh, also, I am um, launching uh, what I call, well, what is the 28-day uh, Can't Ban Black uh, African History Challenge, right? And so the Can't Ban Black Challenge is in response to uh, American politicians and academic institutions um, passing legislation to ban African and African diaspora studies, well, black studies in American school systems, right? So this is not a new problem at all. We've been dealing with this probably as long as uh, the written history of African Americans has been written, right? So, um, we know uh, it's always a fight uh, to get our stories told, uh, whether in education or uh, in media, right? And so that's what I do. I research, I teach, I talk about Africa. That's all I do, right? <laughs> Some people get tired of it, but that's all I do. But my goal is to uh, disrupt and what I call dismantle these Western um, perspectives on uh, African history and African studies. And it's, and my goal also is to talk about topics pertaining to Africa and the African diaspora that brings us together around our common history and our shared uh, life experiences. Okay, so uh, the Can't Ban Black uh, challenge is, again, a challenge for us as people of African descent to tell our own stories, to say, regardless of what you do, those that still control and dominate uh, the academic systems and the media and the social media uh, networks, right? Regardless of what you do, 
We're going to use every tool at our disposal to tell our story the way we know our story should be told. What I call Africa for real, right? That's what I do. So uh, in this can't ban black challenge, what I need all of my followers and all of your friends to do is all across your social media channels on um conversations that you're engaged in on all the platforms i want you to put out just as much african uh history uh much uh as many african facts um about um significant places significant dates in history significant people uh freedom fighters pan-africanists scholars inventors um women children whatever uh you know and that you know to be true, and those you know to be real, I want you to put it out there. But one thing I want you to promise me is that your information that you put out there is vetted, and that is real, and that is accurate, right? Because it's no better if we put it out there and it's not real and it's not accurate than if they do. And I know sometimes we do it and it's not deliberately, but we do it because we are just regurgitating what we have learned in our uh, educational institutions or even in a lot of the resources that we use to do our research because that's all we have access to. And so we use these uh uh, these dates and this information and we take it as the gospel when it's not necessarily so because sometimes these uh, narratives uh, and the images they are biased they are deliberate and they are used to uh, continue to um, uh, oppress uh, black people oppress our history and um fuel low self-esteem, right? And also to fuel white supremacy. But, you know, the time is out for that. Africa time has come. So it's time for us to take charge of our own narrative, which I have to say, especially in the YouTube space, we are doing a very, very good job. And also in the school systems, we have been fighting back. We always have been fighting back and we continue to fight back, you know, uh, so what I'm doing, I'm lynching. I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> not lynching. <laughs> I'm talking too fast. Like I say, I'm a little nervous here, but I'm launching, right? I'm launching two um, com campaigns. Well, one campaign, which is Africa history is black history and also the can't ban black challenge, right? And so again, I, like I said, I would like you to just put forth whatever it is. Uh, I mean, the history, I'm sorry, the facts, uh, the dates, uh, pictures. I mean, just keep it simple. You might just want to include a picture of, say, uh, Stephen Biko of South Africa and put that he's uh, a uh, the fa considered the father of Pan Af of South African uh, black consciousness, and maybe put a picture up there. His dates, uh, maybe uh, even a significant uh, thing that he accomplished uh, while uh, uh, fighting for black freedom or against apartheid in South Africa, uh, and even people that we don't know, you know, because we know, say, uh, Mama Winnie Mandela. Uh, we know about Ya Asantawa. You know, those are um, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, although I want you to include all of that. But if you have some events and some times and some places that we don't know, uh, include those too. And I'm saying that to African American as well. Uh, uh, include the unsung heroes. Include other people that may have been involved in the civil rights that we don't talk a lot about, you know, like Megger Evers, although, uh, you know, we know his name, but Megger Evers and his, uh, and his wife, you know, uh, Merle Evers. So, uh, those are the type of uh, people and type of, uh, things that 
uh, we need to know and that we need to continue to preserve and continue to teach to our people, to our young people, to our middle-aged people, to our old people, because you never get too old to uh, uh, keep, I mean, to learn. And a lot of us uh, don't know about our history. We think we know, but we don't know. It's such a vast and expansive and rich and and long history. So uh, we'll never have enough time to tell it all because we know that African history is world history and African history is black history. So I'm going to get out my soap, get off of my soap box <laughs> because I can be a little long winded, but uh, I'm excited about this, right? And so, again, we're celebrating Black History Month. I know there's a lot of our brothers and sisters who uh, kind of push back on that and say, well, we, you know, we uh, uh, have, uh, I mean, we we need more than just a month or we shouldn't celebrate a month because we are uh, black history all the time. And I understand that. I know we are black history, 365 days a year, 24 seven. But I think it's very important that we take time out and this specific month to acknowledge what, um, the sacrifices that was made were made for us. And not only the sacrifices, the, um, the the ingenuity, the brain power, the labor, all of those things that uh, went in to us being able to uh, do went I'm sorry that went into building other continents, being building America and making it possible for us to do what we are doing today. Because I think sometimes we forget that because we are further removed from it. Uh, than our ancestors was were, but it was a lot of sacrifice, a lot of struggle, a lot of pain, you know, a lot of planning that went into um, black freedom and um, black consciousness. And like I always say, freedom is not free, right? And uh, we have to keep on pushing. So. Uh, we know that uh, Black History Month was started here uh, in this country, in America, by Carter G. Woodson. Uh, it was originally called uh, Negro History Week <laughs> because that's what we were called back then. You know, we've had a lot of names, but uh, we were Negroes at that time, right? <laughs> um and we're black or we're African-American or we're African or, you know, we're Native American, whatever you want to call us. We're all in the same boat, like Dr. King said. Now we're black. Right. So we're talking about uh, this has been a long struggle. Uh, Carter G. Woodson uh, founded um, uh, Negro History Week way back in 1926. And here it is, 2023, 100 years later, and we still um, fighting and fighting the good fight, I may add, but we got to keep on fighting because they will never stop. They will never quit uh, trying to um, keep us in a permanent underclass and we can never quit and we can never stop because we owe it to those that are coming behind us, just like those who sacrificed for us. Right? So, uh, again, Carter G. Woodson, he launched Negro History Week in 1926. It eventually became uh, Negro uh, History Month. He founded the African American uh, Study of Life and History. Uh, and he also wrote uh, the uh, premier Pan African book called The Miseducation of the Negro, which is very popular. And I think everyone may know uh, the name of that book. Uh, I'm, I'm quite sure you can get that book anywhere now on uh, Amazon or maybe any of our black bookstores. Check them out first before you go to Amazon. And then if not, you know, we go to Amazon, right? They got the game. Okay. Um, but don't forget, flood social media with all the black stuff that you can find. Try to keep it positive. Try to keep it progressive. Uh, even when you are talking about events that uh, weren't, uh, you know, that were uh, torturous, that weren't pleasant, there's still a way in which you 
uh, tell the narrative to uh, in an affirmative way that glorifies African people. And that's what I do well, and that's what I do best. You also have to remember, you have to put the African story in context. So many times our story is taken out of context, and that has led to centuries and decades of uh, African narratives that have been negative, that have been biased, and that have been outright uh, fabricated, right? Uh, these images. Even today, when you uh, type in Africa on uh, you on um, Google, with every all the work that we are doing, uh, our YouTubers and our social media um, phenoms, with all the work that we are doing to change the narrative. Um, these negative narratives, these ancient narratives, which is nothing wrong with ancient narratives. Everybody has an ancient history, but that's all that comes up, right? And when you put that in, when you put that and compare it to all of these contemporary and modern images of uh, uh, these uh European continents and in, in 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 these European cultures, then it always makes it always makes us, especially young people that don't have the mind to reason and uh, that don't have rationale, make us feel like we're not quite enough. We're not living up to uh, our potential. That we're not progressive. That we're stuck. That we, you know, that we're poor. That we're impoverished. That we're illiterate. And we all know that that's not true. Like you say, we know that we gave civilization to the world. We know that we are, that we were the scientists. That we were the artists. That we were the mathematicians. That we were the astrologers. We know this, right? And since we know this, we have to make sure the world knows this. Again, I'm going to be on here hopefully uh, every day the rest of this week. And then next week, I'm going to uh, create me a schedule where um, I can uh, do where a good, uh, an efficient schedule where I won't be overworked or overwhelmed, but I can get you the information that I want to get you, right? Uh, the information on uh, African history, on African studies, on uh, current affairs, on uh, African American history, African American um, culture, and current affairs, right? And how these two uh, uh, histories and culture and even contemporary um, events are linked. Right. So that's what's most important to me, that we can see the commonality of both of our cultures. Right. All of our cultures, per se, you know, the whole African diaspora. I I've studied uh, Caribbean or West Indian um, history and South America. I don't know a lot about those as much as I would like to know. You know, you can't know everything, but uh, I know enough. And I'm always uh, open to learn more and more, right? Uh, wherever black people are on the face of this earth, I am interested, right? So, uh, again, uh, one more, uh, I want to remind you one more thing. When you do the uh, Can't Ban Black 28 Day Challenge, I need you to use the hashtag Can't Ban Black again beating the ban, right? African history is black history or African history is world history or I teach Africa for real, Africa for real. And of course, hashtag the real Africanist. And I think um, with enough of us engaging in this hashtag challenge, we can make a dent uh, in teaching uh, each other about this glorious history that has produced us, right? And uh, so just remember to be black, <laughs> be beautiful, be best, and be you, and be proud of being you. I am African-American. So 
Also remember, like I always say, in all thy getting, get understanding. And there's always one, two, more than one side to a story. There's most often two or three. <laughs> I'm getting it though. I'm feeling the flow. And so happy Black History Month again. And I'll see you next time. I am the real Africanus. Peace.